Ray Bradbury A Sound of Thunder The jungle was silent. After the avalanche, a green peace. After the nightmare, morning. Billings and Kramer sat on the pathway and threw up. Travis and Lesperance stood with smoking rifles, cursing steadily. In the time machine, on his face, Eccles lay shivering. He had found his way back to the path, climbed into the machine. Travis came walking, glanced at Eccles, took cotton gauze from a metal box, and returned to the others who were sitting on the path. Clean up. They wiped the blood from their helmets. They began to curse, too. The monster lay, a hill of solid flesh. Within, you could hear the sighs and murmurs as the furthest chambers of it died, the organs malfunctioning, liquids running a final instant from pocket to sack to spleen, everything shutting off, closing up forever. It was like standing by a wrecked locomotive or a steam shovel at quitting time, all valves being released or levered tight. Bones cracked, the tonnage of its own flesh, off-balance, dead weight, snapped the delicate forearms caught underneath. The meat settled, quivering. Another cracking sound. Overhead, a gigantic tree branch broke from its heavy mooring, fell. It crashed upon the dead beast with finality. There! Lesperance checked his watch. Right on time. That's the giant tree that was scheduled to fall and kill this animal originally. He glanced at the two hunters. You want the trophy picture? What? We can't take a trophy back to the future. The body has to stay right here where it would have died originally, so the insects, birds, and bacteria can get at it as they were intended to. Everything in balance. The body stays. But we can take a picture of you standing near it. The two men tried to think, but gave up, shaking their heads. They let themselves be led along the metal path. They sank wearily into the machine cushions. They gazed back at the ruined monster, the stagnating mound, where already... Strange reptilian birds and golden insects were busy at the steaming armor. A sound on the floor of the time machine stiffened them. Eccles sat there, shivering. I'm sorry, he said at last. Get up, cried Travis. Eccles got up. Go out on that path alone, said Travis. He had his rifle pointed. You're not coming back in the machine. We're leaving you here. Lesperance seized Travis's arm. Wait! Stay out of this! Travis shook his hand away. This son of a bitch nearly killed us. But it isn't that so much. Hell no! It's his shoes. Look at them. He ran off the path. My God, that ruins us! We'll forfeit. Tens of thousands of dollars of insurance. We guarantee no one leaves the path. He left it. Oh, the damn fool. I'll have to report to the government. They might revoke our license to travel. God knows what he's done to time, to history. Take it easy. All he did was kick up some dirt. How do we know? cried Travis. We don't know anything. It's all a damn mystery. Get out there, Eccles. Eccles fumbled his shirt. I'll pay anything. A hundred thousand dollars. Travis glared at Eccles' checkbook and spat. Go out there. The monster's next to the path. Stick your arms up to your elbows in his mouth. Then you can come back with us. That's unreasonable. The monster's dead, 
you yellow bastard. The bullets. The bullets can't be left behind. They don't belong in the past. They might change something. Here's my knife. Dig them out.